Hello and welcome to my channel, the place where I take you on RV tours, campground tours to hiking destinations and so much more. Today's video is the first video in a series of lab bench testing videos that I'm going to be doing in which I show and test different RV and camping related items. Today we're in my lab to conduct a combination bench test in which I will be performance testing and confirming the specifications of both the lead time 12 0.8 volt 320 amp hour lithium battery and the VLIT 8000 BTU RVAC. We will do this by pairing them up together and running them as a system just as you might do in your own RV. We'll be comparing our actual bench test results against the advertised specifications to see if you're getting what you're paying for. We'll also attempt to answer that age-old question, how long can I expect to run this AC on my RV's lithium system? If everything performs well, I will upload a video of the installation of the VLIT 12 volt AC onto my adventure van and capture its real world performance, similar to what I have already done for the Furion and Turbro. And you can click on the links above to see those videos. So let's get started. First, let's quickly review the lead time 12.8 volt 320 amp hour battery. Starting with the packaging. The battery came securely packed in form fitted expanded polyethylene foam. The battery came with two M8 terminal bolts and washers along with two insulating caps and a well written manual and quick start guide. Here are my first impressions sleek black color plastic exterior with flush terminals, side carrying handles, and it is IP65 rated for those of you thinking about a boat or outdoor application. This battery is easy to carry as it's only 57 pounds and it's smaller than most batteries with this capacity. It does have a Bluetooth app that connects to the onboard BMS that lets you see the status of the battery. However, I'm not a fan of handing out my email address just to use an app. The app does have a unique feature that allows you to turn the battery on and off. The key technical specifications. For this bench test, I will be verifying its actual capacity, both amp hours and watt hours, along with monitoring the internal battery temperature via the app during a complete discharge. Next, let's review the VLIT AC. Starting again with packaging. Let me start by stating impressive packaging. This AC came inside a cardboard box, but when I removed that, I was surprised to see this impressive wooden box. Opening the wooden box was a little difficult, but once opened, I could see that the AC was well packed within polyethylene foam. The box also contained two mounting brackets, 15 foot power cord with an inline 100 amp fuse, roof foam gasket, foam leveling blocks, zip ties and wire hangers, mounting hardware, interior ceiling trim, remote and instructions. Now here are my first impressions. The unit is very sleek and certainly low profile with a height of only 7 inches. I was surprised by the almost 32 inch width of the unit. And this is something to consider when replacing an existing AC as this AC would not have fit on my roof if I still had the wine guard on it. The overall dimensions are 31.7 inches by 31.7 inches by just 7 inches high and it only weighs 66 pounds, making this a bit easier to lift onto the roof of an RV. Now for the key technical specifications. For this bench test, we will be capturing the actual power draw in amps and watts. We will also be documenting the intake and outlet air temperature, intake airflow, along with the length of time the AC runs before the lead time battery runs out of power. Lastly, here is the testing equipment. Lead time 20 amp battery charger to charge the battery as needed for the different experiments. Therm Pro temperature monitor 
with remote sensor that I will place at the outlet of the AC, BT100 handheld anemometer for airflow, and I will be using a portable ceramic heater to heat the inlet air enough to mimic a hot Florida day. Also, the Vlet app gives the actual intake temperature. Finally, to capture the battery power consumption and time it takes to drain the battery, I'll be using a Victron Energy Smart shunt. Of course, I will include a link in the description of this video for everything used in this video. One last thing before we start the test. In order to effectively heat the inlet air, I created an intake air duct that will allow me to easily heat some of the intake air as well as measure the airflow going into the AC. So let's get started. And through the magic of videos, the results are in. First, let's look at the battery results, which are impressive. As you can see here, the lead time battery advertises 320 amp hours, and we achieved 335.5 amp hours, which is 104.7% of its advertised capacity. Also, lead time advertises 4,096 watt hours, and we achieved 4,319 watt hours, which is 105.4% of its advertised capacity. At the $699 advertised price, this equates to only 16 cents per watt hour. So yes, you do get what you paid for and much more. Now let's look at the results from the AC test. Now, I could not find a breakdown of the power specifications by mode, but the manual did have a range of 400 to 680 watts and 20 to 60 amps. Also, for all of my tests, I kept the fan on its highest setting and the specifications show this should be 250 CFMs. My actual test results varied between 230 to 250 CFMs. In turbo mode, the AC used an average of 639.9 watts and 49.7 amps per hour with an average output temperature of 54.8 Fahrenheit. After 6 hours and 45 minutes, the lead time battery was empty and the BMS stopped the test. For auto mode, the AC used an average of 585 watts and 45.1 amps per hour with an average output temperature of 57.1 Fahrenheit. This gave a runtime of 7 hours 26 minutes. For eco mode, the AC used an average of 440 watts and 34 amps per hour with an average output temperature of 55.8 Fahrenheit. This gave a runtime of 9 hours, 53 minutes. And finally, for sleep mode, the AC used an average of 348 watts and 27 amps per hour with an average output temperature of 61.5 Fahrenheit. This gave a runtime of 12 hours, 25 minutes. Also notice that the average watts used is lower than the range indicated in the specifications. So overall, this AC performed well. The power consumption was low, which is great for off-grid use, and the inlet outlet temperature differential showed very impressive results. However, the airflow is lower than its competitors, so we will need to install this AC into the van to see how well it performs in a real-world environment. Lastly, if you're wondering how long the VLIT 2000 RAC will run on your 12 volt power system, I have created formulas based on my actual test results for each mode. Simply plug in your power system's amp hours to get an estimated runtime. Note, no inverters were harmed in the making of this video. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found this video quite useful. I hope you do join me for those upcoming videos and hope to see you soon. Please subscribe and See you later. Bye-bye.